Hey, this is Matt once again. I have to redo this video again because the last time I did this video, the volume was too low because my webcam screwed up. But I get to talk about the hitcher again. Sorry about that, folks. Now, the hitcher is a classic from 1986 and love this film dearly doing this because of course Rudger Hauer sadly passed away love this film to death this film does a lot of things right a lot of things wonderful very underrated Cisco Nebel at the time gave it zero stars for some stupid reason saying it's so violent even though really when you watch the film it's a lot because it's so intense, because it does it so well, it makes you think it's more violent than it really is. Now, the film was directed by Robert Harmon, who went on to do films like Highwaymen, which is an alright film. It's written by Eric Red, who wrote films like Blue Steel and Near Dark. He went on to be director, Body Parts, very underrated Jeff Fahey film. You also have... Bad, Bad Moon, which he directed, which I enjoy. And the stars is Rudger Hauer as the Hitcher. I know some of the people they were looking at were Terrence Stamp, Sam Elliott, which would have been nice choices, but Rudger definitely made the role his own. See, Thomas Howell, I think some choices were Emilio Estevez and Tom Cruise, but see, Thomas Howell... He did a great job in the role. I would say it's his best performance. Definitely his best performance. And if you wonder what this is, it's a Blu-ray from overseas in the Germany. Film deserves a Blu-ray in the U.S. I don't know why it still hasn't gotten a Blu-ray in the U.S. But this Blu-ray looked beautiful. Uh, I thought the HD looked wonderful on my TV. Sounded great. It carries over the features from the UK DVD, including the 38-minute documentary, which they interviewed, they interviewed Rudder and C. Thomas Howell. It's from quite a few years ago. I forget what year. Now, the, the film, it's, and it's a nice package. It's got posters. I remember first seeing the film. I forget if it was on VHS or DVD with that poster on it. And some nice pictures, like this right here. Great scene between the two. Granted, the text is in Germany, and I can't speak German. But, oh, the film also has Jennifer Jason Lee. You have Jeffrey Dumon, who is a solid character actor, who is the sheriff in the Blob remake from 1988. He was also in an underrated film called Warning Sign. There he is there as Captain Esteridge. Now the story is C. Thomas Howell is Jim Halsey. He's going from Chicago to California, driving this car. He's been hired to drive this car, and it was his ticket to get to California. And he's falling asleep at the wheel, and he sees a hitchhiker. And even he says, hey, my mom told me I shouldn't do this. Sure wants to do his mom. So he picks up Rudger Hauer. And I remember when I f first saw this, I thought it was going to be sort of a meh slasher film or maybe a decent slasher film based on the title and the poster. But right from the get go, you see the beautiful cinematography, the rich colors of the landscape, whether it be the beginning of the sunrise where it's it's dark and it's raining. The landscape of the desert and the highway. The final shot of the film at the end credits where it's the sun setting and you see the silhouette of C. Thomas Howell's character. It's a beautiful looking movie. The cinematography is top notch. It's a well filmed picture. The score by Mark Isham who worked on Nowhere to, One, Nowhere to Run with Van Damme, Blade with Wesley Snipes awesome underrated score it's a very eerie score this eerie is the best word to describe it 
and it fits the film like a glove. I see Thomas Howell, he goes through all the emotions of being scared, being filled with joy when he gets the hitch out of his car, ready to contemplate suicide, to being angry, to just being sort of dead on the outside when he gets to the finale of the film. So it's definitely a wonderful tour de force performance for, for C. Thomas Howell. And of course, Roger Howard, he was scary, he was intimidating, he was... And what the film did well, it wasn't pretentious about this, but you could look more in-depth into it, was who is the hitcher? Is he a phantom? Is he a ghost? Is he just a serial killer? And why is he doing this to see Thomas Howell's character? Is it to make it seem as if, hey, are you a man? Are you man enough to fight me? I want to die. I need someone to take me out. I can't do it myself. Maybe this is my way to teach you how to be a man. Welcome to adulthood. There's a lot of ways you could look into the relationship between these two characters. Whether it be the scene here where C. Tows how how's the gun. He's like, I'm going to blow your brains through your ass. And Rutgers goes, oh yeah, it's now loaded. You better squeeze yours because I'll squeeze mine. He's got a finger and he puts it in the barrel. He doesn't realize it. He scares the shell. C. Thomas. C. Thomas shoots. There's no bullets. He said, well, why are you doing this? And Rudger puts the pennies in his, on his eyes. It's like, you're a smart kid. You'll figure it out. And, the, you know, the pennies to represent another thing, like, is it payment to go into adulthood, payment to travel through the through hell, pretty much, which is what he goes through. Jennifer Jason Lee does a nice job. She's in the film as a character who befriends C. Thomas. She works at this diner and then helps him out on his journey. Uh, I mean, it starts out with a bane, like I said, the beautiful cinematography and the darkness, the, the eerie score. He picks up this guy. Rudger's tears is a little bit weird. And they pass by this car. C. Tows asks something, and Rudger laughs. What's so funny? <laughs> the guy who picked me up, the guy who picked me up before you, he, said, he asked me the same thing. And Rudger keeps his eyes on C. Tyler's just waiting for the reply. When Rudger goes, well, he couldn't have gone very far. And then Rudger keeps looking at C. Tyler's just waiting for him to say something. And of course, C. Tyler's goes, why is that? And then Rudger goes, because I cut off his arms and his legs and his head. And now I'm going to do the same to you. And it has a switchblade. You know how much blood, you know. You know what an eyeball looks like when it's punctured? And steers the shell, C. Thomas, threatens him. But C. Thomas gets the strength, kicks the motherfucker out of his car, and the joy of C. Thomas, yeah, fuck you, buddy, ha ha. Definitely. These two worked very well together. And it had some nice camera work, the pan on, on, low on the ground, and it stops at the feet of Rudger Hauer's character, but it's looking up, and you see Rudger's face and his chin. And I swear it almost seems like he's almost winning a little smile. Like, I found one. And just like this world that it creates, where you got this dust wind going on, and there Rudger appears. And he throws these keys to C. Thomas as if, you want to accept the challenge or not? You want to come and get me? You go ahead. Here's, you know, accept the challenge or not. You know, the game is afoot. However you want to word it. You can look at it in different ways, but it's not being pretentious. It's not wonking you over the head. And just the way that you know, Rutgers character can do all these things, like kill an entire police force, and unlock C. Towns' jail cell 
And he comes out and says, what the fuck? He sees all these dead bodies. And all, the film also has some really good action set pieces, whether it be Rudder blasting through the gas station and almost hitting C. Thomas, and then he lights the match and throws it, and C. Thomas gets in the car and drives away, and his entire car, his car is on fire. Like, this is a real fire, real pyrotechnics when the gas station blows up, or when later on when the cops think C. Thomas Howell's character did it, and they're chasing him, and he's in the car with Jennifer Jason Lee, and they're shooting at him, he's got to put on the brakes, and cops actually shoot their own tires and flip over their cars, or there's a police helicopter, and Roger shoots it with his pistol, and it looked like a real helicopter, they just dropped right onto the road, and again, nice car crashes. Uh, memorable scenes like when C. Towns is eating the French fries and he picks it up, one up, and it's a severed finger. Or later on, when you get Jennifer Jason Lee's character tied up like this. And C. Towns has to try to talk to Rudger. Rudger's like, shoot me. I can't. She'll die. <sighs> Pathetic. Useless. And people think this is a much more violent film than it is, kind of like the original Texas Chainsaw Master. Like, this scene, you don't see her die, you just hear, and the intensity, the, the really solid acting, the realism is what sells it. And just all this comes together in such a great package, unlike the Hitcher 2 I've been waiting, which is a piece of shit, directed video uses film which C. Towns how come back just to retread the same ground and then die and then Terry Wooer takes over as the lead and then Jake Busey who's I'm sorry he's no Rudger Hauer but then the movie's like is it him reincarnated is it his son who gives a fuck Hitcher 2 sucked I've been waiting for a good movie but it ain't the Hitcher 2 and then the remake as I called The Bitcher from 2007, produced by Michael Bay, which lost any intent this film had, any realism intensity this film had, just had a girl in tight tank tops walking away in slow motion from explosions, and Sean the Beanie Baby not having a patch on Rudger's character, just and having action scenes to the Nine Inch Nails song, Fuck you like an animal, fuck that remake. But this movie just, it's so well done, well acted. C. Thomas and Rudger Hauer were great adversaries. A lot of good moments where Rudger Hauer is like playing with C. Thomas Hall's character. And you can look more deep into, you know, he even asked C. Thomas Hall to say, I want to die. But is that really Rudger Hauer's character saying that for himself? But you once see Thomas repeat those words. Again, there's a lot of stuff you look into. It's it's a much smarter film that people give credit to. It's a much well written film than people give credit to. And when the film came out, it did not do well at the box office. Critics destroyed it, which is insane to me because you look at what critics will love today. It's like, well, wait a minute, you you love those films, but not this. So just blows my fucking mind through my ass. Don't get that at all, but hey, what do I know? But glad that we have the 38-minute documentary from the UK DVD. Would have been nice to see new, brand new interviews, but again, we can't have a Blu-ray in the U.S. Again, I don't know why. I don't know. A very nice guy on your Pizzo, he mentioned this is region-free, so I tend to believe him. I put them on region free Blu-ray player, so I'm not sure if it is truly region free, but I guess you can look it up yourself. But yeah, it looked great. I don't see the Blu-ray coming out anytime soon. So definitely pick this up if you can. If you're able to. I said Jeffrey Damon, he's good as Captain Estridge because he's not a cop who's just a one note cliche. He's a guy who acts like a human being you know, tries to help C. Thomas in the third act, you know, emotion-wise. 
Plus, he's always a good character actor. Uh, the the finale where the two have their final face off is satisfying. Nice shotgun blast, and the movie doesn't end on a bullshit note or a sequel bait note. And like I said, you have this sort of quiet, subdued end credits where he's done the deed. He did what he felt he had to, and sitting there smoking a cigarette. And again. Didn't realize this until watching again. The movie begins with darkness into the sunrise. And here it ends with sun. it's daylight and going to the sunset. So I thought that was kind of an interesting back end for the, the movie. You know, how it starts and begins. I thought that was a nice touch by the director. Again, beautiful cinematography, nice intense uh, sequences of acting and action pieces. It's a good horror thriller. And Roger Howard, he he should be up there in the horror icons just for this role alone. Because he's intimidating, but he's intelligent. He is not over the top. He's not hamming it up. He's just scary. And again, he's memorable. The way he delivers his lines, the looks he gives, uh, moments like when C. Towns House spits on him and he just plays with the spit. Just so much stuff to, to look into this film and much more that I'm sure you guys can talk about, but definitely worth a look. Awesome fucking film. All time classic. Definitely worth a look if you've never seen it. And hopefully the video works this time and doesn't have uh, audio. But thanks for watching. Take care. Rest in peace, Roger Hauer. I'm going to continue a little mini marathon of Roger Hauer films, but how to start with the Hitcher because it's just an absolute fucking classic. See you guys later. Bye bye.